Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Today, our gospel reading comes from John 20, verses 19 through 30. Hear these words. When it was evening of that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come and believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Gracious God, be with us in these moments. Prepare our hearts to receive what you have prepared for us today. Let us hear your voice and fill your spirit within us. Lord, I pray that your words will come through me, that you will put your servant Melissa out of the way, and that you will speak and be known in this place. In your name we pray, amen. Have you ever locked your keys inside your car? If so, you'll probably identify with this story that I'm about to share. It was during my first year of seminary, and it was the year that I call fondly the year of the lockout. Now, you may wonder why I say this. Well, I'll tell you. It's because that year I locked my keys in the car 12 different times at least. I was tired that year. I had had a long commute each day. I was distracted. Now, prior to that year, I'd only locked my keys in my car once, ever. And well, since that year, well, now I carry an extra key with me. 
But that year, I was on a first-name basis with the Emory Campus Police. And each time that I would call, they would come again and again to open my door. Today's gospel reading makes me think of those experiences of being locked out of my car. Except in this case, we find the disciples, minus Thomas, locked in a house. It's the evening of the day when Mary has come to them and has told them that she has seen the Lord. And there they are, locked inside, out of fear of the Jewish leaders, the scripture tells us. Now, we may wonder why, because they've heard this good news. And it's really easy for us to fall into that trap of giving them a hard time. But I think, you know, maybe they were afraid. Maybe they were afraid of meeting a fate similar to the one that Jesus had met, or maybe they were afraid of being accused of stealing the body. Either way, I think those things are completely justifiable. But it's the thing that happens next in the story that always strikes me. The part where Jesus comes in through the door and offers peace, and shows them his scars. And then Jesus offers them peace again and tells them to go out the door to share the good news. And finally, Jesus breathes on them, offering his Holy Spirit to them so that they are strengthened for the task ahead. So what do they do? Well, we might think that they go and they follow what Jesus says. But instead, we go next to one week later, and we find them again locked inside a house. They're not bold and empowered by this experience of having seen Jesus and received the Holy Spirit. Instead, they're right back where they started. Now, this time, Thomas is with them, and Thomas is hoping to have an experience similar to the one that they had had the previous week. And that's when Jesus shows up again, offers peace, shows his scars to Thomas, and then tells them, or tells Thomas and everyone within the earshot, I think, to believe. To believe and to again go through the door to share the good news. Here we are, one week later, one week after Easter, one week since we said, Alleluia, Christ has risen, one week since it felt so easy for us to give everything over to our Savior and to live and relish that joy of new life. But where are we today? Are we locked behind the same doors that we hid behind prior to Easter? Or are we ready to go out into the world, strengthened by the good news, to share it with all the people we meet, to proclaim that Jesus lives? If the resurrection is such a big deal, if it is so life-changing, then why would we ever be right back where we were to begin with? Easter needs to change us, not send us back to the same place. But that same place, it's comfortable and it's familiar. We like it there. In uncharted territory, saying things that are new, going to people that maybe we don't know, that's hard. And so we, like the disciples, can easily give ourselves over to that temptation to go in behind the locked doors and stay there. Now, when we find the disciples there, they they need some answers. They need some assurance. They need to process all the things that have happened in the past few days. And the answer to their questions, well, it begins at the door. The door that Jesus does not unlock and walk through, 
but rather the door that Jesus keeps locked and walks through. The door that shows us Jesus' determination to reach people, to strengthen them, and to move them out into the world. Now, there are two sides to every door. The first, of course, is the inside. That's where the lock is, and it's a place that usually feels pretty private and secure. It's a place where we can take faith seriously, but we don't necessarily have to share it with others. Now, typically, when we're behind the locked door, we are with the people who feel safe. We know what to expect of them. They know what to expect of us. It's not a lot of challenge there. This is a place that feels very secure to us. And Jesus is determined to reach the people beyond the locked door. The place where people of faith often get stuck. We hear the story of the day of resurrection. We rejoice and we give thanks. And then the day is done. And we stop. But resurrection's not a one time event. It's a way of being and living. As the hymn said this morning, we are an Easter people. But that doesn't mean we won't have doubts and questions. It isn't always easy for us to live into the reality of Easter. For most of us, I imagine that on the Monday after Easter, we woke up to basically the same life that we had on Good Friday. But it isn't because the resurrection didn't work for us. It's because the resurrection is something that we have to grow into. But growth means change, and something always has to die in order for new growth to occur. When Jesus came to the disciples... They're, they're scared. They're hiding, and they're full of questions. They're not living in hope. But Jesus seeks them. And Jesus, in the same way, seeks us and answers our questions. The answers always come through Jesus. Jesus steps through the walls of our fears, our doubts, our hardships, and offers us peace. Jesus says we're not lost, but have already been found. Jesus comes to us again and again. On the inside of the door, we can know that the tomb is empty. But it's only when we embrace the rest of the story of resurrection that we can truly live like the tomb is empty. And Jesus knows this. The other side of the door, on the outside, is where the story of resurrection begins. It's where the story of resurrection is set loose. When Jesus was inside the tomb, no one could see him. But when he stepped out of the tomb to the other side, that's when he began to reveal himself to others and to proclaim that death had been defeated. When Jesus comes and offers peace, he doesn't stop there, but he goes on to say more. He ends the sentence with, and as my Father has sent me, so I am sending you. He sends us beyond the door. The peace that Jesus offers is not a peace that we think about in terms of the world. It's not rainbows and butterflies. It's not where everything is in order and things are calm. It doesn't necessarily maintain the status quo, but sometimes it even upturns the status quo. It's an unexpected peace. It's a peace that calls us to the other side of the door, the side where the world lives, the side that can be messy, the side where things are public. The side where community and relationships are built. The place where good and evil contend with one another. The place where some things work to bring about the kingdom of God and some do not. When Jesus offers his peace, he empowers us for the work of Easter. 
work that is not always easy, but that tells the resurrection story. Jesus transforms us from just followers to proclaimers, to people who move beyond the door and out into the world. Jesus prepares and invites us to go through the door and into the world with him. And when we step through that door, the new life we received, it's revealed to everyone. The resurrection is our starting point. It's the place from where we are called to go out into the world. And Jesus shows us what this means when he gives us his spirit to help us on the way. The story begins when we say yes to the mission that is entailed in resurrection. It's the starting point from which we move forward. It marks our opening to new growth in faith, community, and life. And even though we may sometimes give into that temptation to give the disciples a hard time, like I mentioned earlier, we also know that they did go beyond the door. Take Thomas, for example. We often tag him with the nickname Doubting Thomas. But do you know the rest of the story? The rest of his story. Do you know where Thomas died? Well, Thomas died in India. Thomas carried the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people of India. He went there to share the good news. And that's where he died. He died as a martyr, having been run through with spears. That does not sound to me like someone who continued to doubt. It does not sound like someone who is leading an easy, complacent life. What it does sound like is someone who was changed by the resurrection, who was changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ, who grew in his faith and its courage, A person for whom the resurrection made a huge difference. We always remember doubting Thomas. But maybe we need to listen more to confessing Thomas. To the time when he said, my Lord and my God. Thomas recognized Jesus and he stepped through the door to a new life. A life that moves from doubting to confessing. It's a story of resurrection. The day that Jesus came to him in his doubt, that was just the starting point of the story. But it wasn't the whole story. And the same is true for us. What is our starting place? Last week, we celebrated the good news of Easter. But let's not stop there. Let's not let that be the end of the story. Let's take time to consider what needs to die inside of us so that we can truly live out the story of resurrection. No matter where we are today, whether we're lonely or afraid or timid or challenged or uncertain, That is where Jesus comes to us, comes to us through the door. And it's where Jesus meets us, and it's the place where Jesus sends us out from so that we can tell the story to the world. When I shared about my tendency to lock my keys in the car several years ago, I didn't tell the entire story. The way that I learned from those experiences You see, each time that I would lock my keys in my car, I was very embarrassed. And while I was waiting on the campus police to come, I would sometimes sit there and try to come up with some reasonable excuse for what I had done, because I wanted to tell them when they got there. I didn't just want them to think I was, you know, the person who locked their keys in the car for like the 10th time. But each time they came, they never laughed at me. They never asked questions. They never judged me. They never gave me a hard time. 
Instead, they asked me how my day was going. They told me to get some rest. And then they unlocked my door. They unlocked my door. They gave me what I needed on those days so that I could move forward. And eventually, I did move forward from those days. The gospel story would be tragic if the disciples had remained behind the door and not unlocked it. If they had refused to go through to the other side. But that's not the story. This is the story where Jesus shows up and meets us where we are, behind the locked doors and our doubts and our fears and our worries. And he gives us what we need. He shows us the depths of his love, and he strengthens us for the journey ahead. He wants us to move beyond the starting point. This is the gospel story, not about the disciples who don't go, but about the disciples who do go. It's about the people who get out of the house. Jesus knows it's not easy, but don't worry. Jesus will come again and again. He'll keep showing up. It happened twice in today's scripture. The one who comes to us, he is born the brunt of chaos and hate and is present now and is alive. Easter changes everything. It changes us. Easter gives us courage at every point in our lives, in every experience. So don't judge where you are today. It is what it is. It's just the starting point. It's the place where you stop just hearing the story of resurrection and you start living it. Nothing will keep Jesus from stepping into your midst breathing peace and hope into your life and giving you the courage to unlock the door and go through it out into the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for coming to us wherever we are. Thank you for giving us your courage and your hope and your strength. And Lord, we pray that today will be our starting point that it will be the point where we start living the story of resurrection. Lord, we thank you for always loving us and caring for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 1115 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.